missed your opportunity. It was right there. Well, I left it hanging there for you. Yeah, yeah, I got you. Yeah, I did someone to joke. But I know Miss Beth loves me though. Yes, I do. Well, at least today. Well, praise God though. It's amazing to me how God puts these things together. I have said over and over again, and I will continue to say, I can do nothing except what God Almighty does through me. I have no ability on my own, only what He tells me to do. And I, as I was preparing this message today, it dawned on me how God has been leading us up to it. I don't put this stuff together. All I do is do what He tells me to do. Today we're going to have a baptism. And it's going to be awesome. It's going to be amazing. And I know that, uh, that God told me to do a whole message on baptism so that we all understand exactly what it means. And so we're prepared for what God's about to do here today. And if by chance anyone uh, gets their mind changed and would like to be baptized today, the, the water's here. It's warm. It's not cold water. And it's all ready to go. But at any rate, it's about cleansing us, right? And isn't it amazing that God Almighty, over the last couple of weeks, has started out, we're talking about how Jesus washed the feet of the disciples. Isn't that interesting? I didn't plan that, but God sure did. How he washes their feet. He said, if you have already had a bath, because they were believers, they knew who Jesus was. They knew that he was the Savior of the world. They knew that he was the Son of God. So they had been washed, just like there's power in the blood. They had been washed in the blood. But they needed their feet washed because we keep walking around and all this kind of stuff, right? We keep walking around in this world and we get our feet dirty. I mean, there's no way around that. You're going to get your feet dirty if you walk around in this kind of stuff that's going on in this world. It's getting crazier by the day. And now we're seeing that, that the Lord God comes and washes our feet. And then last week we talked about how that we should wash each other's feet and serve one another is basically what that means. That we're going to serve one another and put other people's needs ahead of our own. Boy, what a crazy thing that is, right? But he's been talking about how to serve each other and to wash each other's feet and how he washes us and cleanses us. And gives us water to drink. Praise God. But with the baptism today, the Lord had reminded me how we get washed away from the things that defile us. So we're going to talk today about how He washes us from all the impurities that we come in contact with on this earth. So let's pray. Father, we thank You for Your Word, Lord God, and thank You that You have brought Your people here. Thank you, Father, that this is your word to us, that you have written us a letter, that we get to hear what you have to say to us. Thank you, Lord, for bringing each and every person here. Now, open our eyes to see, Lord, what you would show us today. Open our ears to hear what you would say to us, Lord, and give us a soft heart to receive your word today. For your word is good. Your word is good, Lord. We we'll give you all the honor and the glory in Jesus' holy name. Amen and amen. So, we read in Hebrews 10, 19, Therefore, brethren, he's, re, re, he's uh, writing this to the church, right? Therefore, brethren, having boldness to enter the holiest by the blood of Jesus. We were just talking about singing about the blood. There's power in the blood. And we get the power and the boldness to walk right into the holiest of holies. And, in other words, right into the presence of God most high. We can come into the presence of God most high. I told you before, when I got saved, I, the, and Jesus brought me to the Father, I said, you can't, you're just going to accept me? Do you know me? I'm the scum of the earth, and you just say, I'll take you, just like that? But he does. When we come before his throne and say, Lord, take this away, wash me and cleanse me, he says, yeah, we can come boldly, Right into the presence of God Most High. I knew I had no business coming before a holy God. But He accepted me. Just like that. When I confessed my sins. So, He says, by a new and living way. A new way. A living way. Which He consecrated for us through the veil that is His flesh. That He, the, he is the veil. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. 
no one comes to the Father but by me. In this world today, and in our own brains a lot of times, our big brain, as someone used to tell me all the time, our big brain would tell us there's many ways to get to heaven. Well, Jesus said that he is the way, the truth, and the life. There is no other way but, to, but by him. And he is the veil. And having a high priest, hang on, and having a high priest, which is Jesus, is over the house of God. And it doesn't mean this place here. Well, he is over this house because we let him be the Lord of this house, right? Over our congregation. We let him be the Lord over us and over the house of God, over the, the, uh, the whole church as a whole worldwide. He is the head. And what a better way to lead. What a leader we can have when you've got God Almighty, Jesus, his son, coming and leading us. What an amazing thing. So, you know, so I got the power on my finger there. Let us draw near with a true heart. Draw near to Him. Come into His presence and draw up close to God Almighty. It still amazes me that He lets me into His presence. Uh, but He does. But we come in with a true heart. We can't just come in and, oh Lord, here I am. Doing whatever I want to do. Mm -mm. We come with a true heart. And in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Talking about baptism over the pure water. He washes us with that pure water. But our hearts are sprinkled from an evil conscience. We need that blood. We need the blood of Jesus to be sprinkled on us. Remember in the Old Testament where they go and sprinkle the blood on the mercy seat? We'll talk about that here in just a minute. But we need to have that blood applied to us to cover our sin. So that we're sprinkled from an evil conscience. See, the word says that our, our mind is evil. And always thinking of evil things to do. And when it is true, we fight all the time. I fight all the time with what my own mind wants to do. And I just got to say, Lord, I don't want to do what I want to do. Otherwise, I'm my Lord. Right? Otherwise, I'm being my own Lord. But Lord, I want to do what you want to do. Or what you want me to do. That's making him my Lord. He's my boss, right? He tells me what to do. So, but he does that and he washes our bodies with pure water. In Leviticus 16, 3, we're talking about how the, the uh, high priest would go into the Holy of Holies. In the Old Testament, back when they had the temple and everything, they would have the, the outer court where everyone could come in. Then you had the inner court where the priests and everything would minister to God. And then you had the Holy of Holies behind that veil. And the high priest would go in there. So here we see this. Thus Aaron shall come into the holy place. He's the high priest. He is God's selected man to come in there. With the blood of a young bull as a sin offering. And of a ram as a burnt offering. He shall put the holy linen tunic and the linen trousers on his body. He shall be girded with a linen sash. Now what does all that mean? A linen tunic, a linen uh, trousers, and a linen sash. As a matter of fact, we, uh, with a linen turban, he shall be attired. So from the top of his head all the way down, he's covered in this linen. He says he gives us his robes of righteousness, right? He gives us his robes of righteousness. Linen is something that you don't sweat in. It breathes. God didn't want anyone coming before his throne sweating bullets. You know, oh, man, I'm going to the holy God, which we should have respect. There's no question about that. But we come in that assurance like we just talked about a minute ago. Coming with the assurance that I can come in here because I've been washed. I've been cleansed. And I don't have to sweat when I come before God Almighty. I tell you, the first time I came, I was sweating because I knew I had no business coming before a holy God because I knew who I was. Uh, no one had to tell me I was a sinner because I knew good and well I was a sinner. I didn't have to, anyone tell me that. But we put on the, the linen garments from the head to toe. These are holy garments. Holy garments. Therefore, he shall wash his body in water. Washing his body in water and then put them on. See, they would always have, they had the laver out front, out before you could go in at all, and you washed yourself. These were ceremonial things that they did 
looking forward to the, the finishing product when Jesus would come. So they would go and wash themselves first. They had to be washed and cleansed before they could come into the Holy of Holies. Before they could come in before God Almighty. And just like we need to be washed before we can come into the presence of God Most High. And here we're about to wash our sister or watch God wash her clean. But he comes and he puts on those holy garments after he has washed himself. And when we come before God Almighty and say, forgive me, Lord God. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. And he cleanse us, wash us of all unrighteousness. And see, that's what he would do. This was a symbol that he was doing here. He was washing himself and then putting on the, those clean linen garments. Just like when we come and say, Lord, forgive me. I'm a sinner. I need to be saved from myself. Right? I'm my worst own in it. I'm, uh, my own worst enemy, right? Because I keep doing stuff that I shouldn't be doing. But he comes and he takes that away. Lord, take that away. And he washes us and cleanses us. And he puts us on those nice, holy, clean linen garments once we're clean. I love what the Word of God has to say. Then he shall... Oh, did I miss one? Okay. Did I miss one? Okay. Then he shall kill the goat, oh, that's right, of the sin offering, which is for the people. He kills the goat, for, which is the sin offering for the people. There needs to be, the, the Lamb of God had to be slain for us. For our sin, is for the sin of the people. And bring its blood inside the veil. Behind the, the veil into the very holy of holies. He would take that blood. Again, we've just sung that there's power in the blood. And sprinkle it on the mercy seat and before the mercy seat. See, if God is sitting on his seat, sitting on his throne, where's his feet? They're going to kind of be right in front of it, aren't they? And he would sprinkle the blood at his feet. And he would sprinkle the blood where God sits as well. It's the mercy seat because he's given us mercy. Even in the midst of us deserving all kinds of punishment, we deserve it because I keep messing up. Do you want to hear perfect? Not me. I'm not perfect by a long shot. But he washes me and cleanses me, cleanses me when we come and say, Lord, take this away. I don't want to live like this any longer. I keep messing up. I want to do what you say. Because anything that God tells me to do has got to be the exact thing, the right thing to do, right? How can I mess up anymore if I'm doing what God Almighty tells me to do? What a perfect thing to do there. But we need to have that blood sprinkled that there must be a blood atonement for our sin. So it shall make atonement for the holy place because of the uncleanness of the children of Israel. The uncleanness. And because of their transgressions for all their sins. And that's something that he knows that there has to be a blood sacrifice. Someone's got to pay because I keep messing up. He paid. He sent his son so that we he wouldn't have to we wouldn't have to die. So that he becomes our sin atonement for because we messed up. Ezekiel 36, 17 says, Son of man, when the house of Israel dwelt in their own land, they defiled it by their own ways and deeds. They defiled it. He gave them this land flowing with milk and honey, gave them houses that they didn't build, gave them vineyards that they didn't have to plant, gave them everything that they needed flowing with milk and honey, and just gave it to them and said, Here you go. And they defiled it by their own ways and their deeds. You know, the word says there's a way that seems right to a man, but therein the, the end thereof is death and destruction. Isn't that something? We think we're doing right. Just like I would keep swearing I was doing the right thing. We're always doing the wrong thing. I keep messing it up over and over again. I know I'm doing this right. I'm doing it. Always mess it up. Always do the wrong thing. But because of my mess up, he had to cleanse me. To me, their way was like the uncleanness of a woman in her customary impurity. In other words, her monthly menstrual cycle. 
as how dirty it, our sins are by uh, in his sight. Therefore I poured out my fury on them for the blood they had shed on the land and for their idols with which they had defiled it. They defiled their land by worshiping other things other than God Almighty. The first commandment, I am the Lord thy God. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. And yet today it kind of sounds like what we tend to do here. We put ourselves first. We put anything and everything above God. We don't want to do what God wants to do. We make up our own ways. My God wouldn't do this, and my God wouldn't do that, and my God does this. Well, I think you got the wrong God. Because there is only one God. We can't make up our new one, our own one that makes sense to us. Because it won't work. It won't work. We have to do things His way. And we keep defiling the things that God Almighty has given us to help us. So I scattered them among the nations, and they were dispersed throughout the countries. I judged them according to their ways and their deeds. See, we have to understand that we need a Savior. If we don't understand that we need a Savior, how are we going to come to Him? We need to understand that we keep messing this thing up over and over again, and He will wash us. <clears throat> and I will take you from among the nations, gather you out of all countries. He's saying, come back to me. I'm going to bring you back to me and bring you into your own land once again. They had gone into sin and everything. They started worshiping these idols. It's a history book. The Old Testament is a history book, but it's a, a type and shadow of what we do. There's no difference. Boy, we keep saying all that. Boy, I can't believe those guys were that dumb to do all that stuff. Oh, we do the same stupid things. Come on, we do the same stuff. But they had gone and defiled their land, and God took and sent other people to take, take them away. And I'm here to tell you that if we start doing our own thing, the enemy comes and carries us away, and we get beat up. He sent people there to bring them into captivity. They went into Babylon and was held captive there for years and years, for 70 years. He was there. They were there. Because they had messed up. See, and that's exactly what happens to us. When we mess up and get, start doing our own thing, we get carried away and hauled off and in bondage until we come back around to him. So he's saying, I'll bring you back and put you back in your own land. And this is the good part. Then I will sprinkle you with clay, I will spring, sprinkle clean water on you, and you shall be clean. I like being clean before God Almighty. I will cleanse you from all your filthiness and from all your idols. We need that cleansing flood. And you notice he says here is that I'll sprinkle you with clean water. That almost sounds like what Jesus told Peter when we were studying just last week. How he says uh, that he was washing their feet and Peter comes and says, Oh, you're not going to wash my feet. And he says... Well, if I don't wash your feet, you can have no part in it. He says, well, take, give me a, a complete bath. Wash me all over. And he says, you've already been washed. He had already been saved. He knew who Jesus was. He had already accepted him as the Son of God. He had just said it just a, a few chapters before. But Jesus says, I just need to wash you up a little bit. When God had brought the people of Israel, his children, out of Egypt... He took them through the Red Sea, and they parted it, and they went through that Red Sea, and that was a, a type and shadow of baptism, where he washed them in that water and brought them up out of the other side. And so that we see the same thing here. So now all they need is to be sprinkled again, just to get the little washing of the feet. They had already been saved. They knew who he was. They were just coming back to him after being apart from him for a long time. But they, they still get their feet dirty. We walk around in this stuff. We start doing things that we shouldn't do. And we get our feet dirty. I will give you a new heart. Boy, what an amazing thing. That God Almighty has so much mercy on us. I'll send you out there and I'll let you get in trouble and do all the stuff. But I'm going to bring you back. I'm going to call you back to your own place where you should be all along. And then I'm going to give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you. We need, you know, there's a big thing going on right now, a spiritual awakening. Everybody's got this new 
uh, I'm, I'm a very spiritual person and all this, and they're still doing all sorts of things that don't agree with the Word of God. They're out there committing all sorts of sins, but they call themselves a spiritual person. But that's not the case. But we need a new heart. See, my heart is deceptive and wicked above all things. I need to see that I need Him. I need to look inside. The Word says, let a man examine himself. Right? Take this away, Lord. Take this away. He will give us that new heart. I will put a new spirit within you. I need my spirit regenerated. I will take the heart of stone out of your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. So we get so hard-hearted. You know, we get resistant. We don't want to hear all this stuff. And we build up all this stuff. I don't want to hear any of this. So I don't want to do any of this thing to you. Yeah. And we start hardening our hearts. And saying, I will not do it the way you want to do it, Lord. I'm going to do my own thing. I'm going to do whatever I want to do. I will put my spirit within you. And cause you to walk in my statutes. And you'll keep my judgments and do them. Again... I always use myself as an example. I don't want to call on one of you guys, but you're going through the same thing I'm going through, so I'll use me as an example. I was doing whatever I wanted to do, and what I wanted to do was not very good. I was not a nice guy. I was not a good person. But God put His Spirit within me, and all of a sudden, He caused me to walk in His statutes. We try and clean ourselves up. I've talked to so many people, and they say, well, I'll come to the Lord once I get myself clean, you'll never come. It's not going to happen because we can't overcome on our own. If we could overcome sin on our own, Jesus wouldn't have had to die. But because we can't overcome it, we might be able to wrestle away and get something straightened out every once in a while. I've seen a few people that can do some things, but they're still doing all kinds. They might get victory over one area. But they still got so many other things going on in their life. They can't get victory over this. Just like I couldn't. I kept trying to do the right thing. I joined the army to get away from all the sin that I was in. But I was the problem. All I did was change locations. <laughs> that doesn't make any difference. The scenery is different, but I'm still the problem. I'm still the one that needs to be washed and I can't overcome it. So he causes me to walk in his statutes. And that I will keep his judgments, and I will do them. I will actually change. That's called repentance, right? We're going in this direction, and we turn around and go the opposite direction is repentance. I'm turning around and going the opposite direction from the way that I was going. And that is called repentance. Ephesians 5.25 says, Husbands, love your wives. Now look at this. How's this got to anything to do with, with uh, baptism? But watch. Husbands, love your wives, just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her. Now, this is something that we can all learn from. We give ourselves over to serve one another, whether it's our spouse or just another uh, brother or sister in the Lord or whoever. We serve one another. We give ourselves up for her that he might sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of water by the word. Amen. The washing of the, by, of the water. We need to be washed. We need to be cleansed of the filthiness that we carry around. And so we're about to wash the, watch the washing of the water, but it's his word, right? We have to know what the word of God says. So that's why we learn and we come in here and we get washed by the water of the word over and over again. Because we need to understand what God Almighty is doing. We need to understand His statutes that we may walk in His ways and not our own. So, that He might present her to Himself, a glorious church. Not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing. But that she, she should be holy and without blemish. Can you be holy and without blemish on your own? I'm going to say, I can't. I cannot be holy and without blemish, without spot or wrinkle on my own, because I continue to do things my own way, and I can't get there by myself. Romans 6, 4 says, Therefore we were buried with him through baptism into death, 
Ah, so we find out we not only have to come to repentance. You notice that, that Jesus, God Almighty, sent John the Baptist first. And he gave a baptism of repentance. He kept saying, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand, right? And we also saw in Acts 18 where Apollos was going around. He was a mighty man of God. He was moving in God and going and preaching the word of God. But he was going and preaching the baptism of John. The, the repentance of John. The baptism of repentance. And uh, Apollos, I mean, uh, uh, Aquila and Priscilla saw him and said, hey, there's more to it. There's more to it than just repentance. You need to die to yourself. Our own wants and desires, we got to say, I don't want to do what I want to do any longer. I want to do what you want to do. And how can we do that other than we die to what I want? I die to myself. I will not allow myself to continue to do whatever I want to do because it is death. And I keep doing the same thing over and again, over and over again, expecting to get a, a different result. Doesn't work. Then that's the, the definition of insanity, isn't it? To continue to do the, the same thing over and over again and expect a different result. We need to understand that through baptism, we're, it's a symbol. As we go under that water, we're leaving the old person. We're uh, symbolically relating to him in his death as he went into the grave, right? And when we come back up, just that as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we should walk in newness of life. He was raised up, and when you come out of that water, you're going into that grave, supposedly, that watery grave, and as you're coming back up, you're going to walk in newness of life. He has washed you and cleansed you, but not only that, He has given you a new life. He's given you New, a new way to overcome the sins of this world. We cannot overcome this world by ourselves. For if we have been united together in the likeness of his death, if we're doing just like he did in his death, we cer certainly we shall also shall be in the likeness of his resurrection. We're being resurrected from the dead because I'm dying to myself. I don't want anything to do with my old way of doing things. Because all it does is keep dragging me down and beating me up and causing me to live in defeat. I don't like living in defeat. I got tired of that a long time ago, you know. It gets hard. It gets hard living in defeat. You're always saying, why am I always getting beat up all the time? Why is life so hard? Well, we keep doing things our own way. But when we come out of that death, when we die to ourselves, and we're resurrected to a new life. Jesus said something like about you should be born again. Right? Start all over again. And, of course, Nicodemus said, what do you mean by that? What am I supposed to do? Go back in my mother's womb? Give me a break. I can't do that. Well, of course not. But we get resurrected. We die to what we want. And we get reborn into a new, new body, a new soul, a new spirit. Again, so many times, like I've said before... When Cindy and I first got saved and got married, we'd walk by the beer section at the grocery store and say, well, we got all the beer we want. We just don't want any. He gives me new, new wants, new desires. I have been resurrected from that dead life of living in that death and that defeat. And all of a sudden, now I'm resurrected into a new person. All things are passed away. All things have become new. Isn't that beautiful? That we come to life. We get a new life. He starts us over again in Him. So that is what we're about to do here. We're about to come and... And I know this is a short one because we got other things to do here, right? We're about to, uh, to go back here. And we will have... We'll come back out here in a few minutes. Brother Bill is going to come up. And he's had many requests, but he's going to go and sing anyway. <laughs> I beat him to it. See, he always says that one. So I'll one. That's bad when they take this yeah. thing away from right there. Take yeah. the words right out of my mouth. Yeah. <laughs> and that's, that's just unclean, you know, taking the words out of your mouth. I got my own foot in there enough, so, you know, you might as well have your, some words in your mouth. But we're going to come back in just a minute. Where we're going with my phone.
But we're going to go back and get ready. And now that we understand what the, the baptism was all about, we're going to come back out and, and have a baptism here in just a few minutes. And then we'll have a wonderful meal together. So, Brother Bill, if you'll come up and fill in for me while I go back and get changed. But I'm not going there later. So if I get a little bit off, I've been accused of that all these years anyway. I want to sing a song called Until Then. Hallelujah. Until 
singing, I mean, is it raining outside? Roxanne, would you mind going back and it's it's in the CD player. I suppose. It's called Who Am I? Thank you, Lord. You know, when you when you go under that water in baptism, you go under it with faith, believing that when you come out of that water, you're going to come out a changed person. You're as saved as you'll ever be. Can't get any more saved than that. But how many of you know that the day you gave your life to the Lord didn't end all the struggles in your life? The habits you had, the things you've always been accustomed to doing, Things you say, the way you treat people, that didn't all of a sudden go away, did it? But if you go under that water in faith, believe, God will deliver you under that water. There's a miraculous working under that water. It's not just getting wet. Anybody can go in there and get wet and don't change a thing. I know that's the way it was for me. I was baptized when I was 10 years old. I went to a, uh, to a revival and the preacher scared the hell out of me. And so I knew I had to go. I had to get baptized. Well, it didn't change anything. I didn't know. I didn't have an understanding. That's why infant baptism is not right. You've got to go into that water believing. You've got to have faith. There's nothing in the world wrong with dedicating your babies. Absolutely. But I didn't know what I was doing. So I came out the same thing the same way I went in. It wasn't until years later that I heard the revelation word about water baptism. And I had the faith to believe. And when I went in that water, I came out a changed man. Because I had been saved for a long time, but I still had trouble with a foul mouth and with temper, and with doing things I shouldn't be doing to people and around people. I found out the power of God to save under that water. And so that's why this is so significant today. Alright. Are we ready? I'm going to try this one. Messed up on it, like I'm going to try Yeah. 